You'd think, after five months of doing YouTube videos, that I would get better at this. I don't. I don't know why. I don't think it comes naturally to me to do this kind of thing. And I've come upstairs and I've chatted away for the last 10 minutes and I've told you all about our windows and all the different surfaces. I've even asked for advice on the materials that have been used on the walls. And I've gone to turn it off and it wasn't recording. So I'm going to do it again. Hello. Right. Well, you join me and I am halfway through hoovering these beams. You may think that's a complete waste of time because they're going to be covered over with insulation and boarding again at some point, but they're just covered in cobwebs and I'm just a cleaner by nature. So I can't knowingly leave them there, cover them back over again. So at the moment I've done pretty much all of that side and as far this way as I can on the trestles. And I'm just going to double check that I've managed to get everything along here. Um, I'll flick you around in a moment and show you. Um, before I then move the trestles to do that wall over there with the window facing out onto the back. And then this rest of it. But I'll show you what it looks like before, uh, one second, right, so here, <clears throat> there's all the nasty cobwebs, and it really is only cosmetic, it has no bearing on the strength of the roof or anything really, on how the boards will go up or how the insulation will go up, but I know it's there, so it has to go. Because there's quite a lot of cobwebs. Dust, years of dust. I'm guessing this has been here a hundred or so years, and obviously not all of the cobwebs have been here that long. So that's what I'm about to do. Or I have been doing and I will continue. So that's the bits that haven't been done. <clears throat> and yesterday Ben was just, I'd say scraping paint off the wall. It's, that makes it sound like it was difficult to get off. It wasn't, it's come away from the walls. And strangely, this patch yesterday, we probably could have got some of it off, but it was quite difficult but where we've had the fire going in here and it's drying out the walls the paint has started to peel which was quite handy really because Ben's been able to this morning get some more off and hopefully in time we'll get all of it off not that it particularly matters because the top layer of plaster because we think it's a modern plaster modern day plaster not lime on the very top layer, it'll have to come off anyway, so it doesn't matter so much. Yeah. Now it's, if anybody's a, a bit of an expert about what these things are, that doesn't look like a lime plaster to me. And I'm guessing with the way that we got some mould and mildew on the walls up here, but the, the paint on the out, outside is a, an emulsion, a vinyl. This one isn't, maybe not a vinyl, but the pink one definitely is a vinyl emulsion on the pink side, because it has a bit of a shine to it. But if anybody knows for definite, I, I don't think that's lime. It's very smooth. It does break but not like a, it doesn't crumble like a lime um, it has an almost a ceramic-y sound to it when it's dropped 
instead of the sort of fud noise that lime would make. So that's that. So that's showed you the side. Let me get a bit closer. This is a side so I have still yet to do with all its lovely cobwebs. Oh, there's so many bits and pieces in the way. <clears throat> and these are the bits that I've done today. So they look much nicer and cleaner. I think somebody said in the, one of the comments the other day that on a cleaner we're picking up the bits of the timber and that that's on the floor. I am by nature, I'd like to tidy. I know it's not everybody's idea of fun, but I like a good tidy. Get it from my dad, I think. He's a bit of a mean tidier as well. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing very shortly to get these last bits out. Got a nice fire going. We've got a fire guard coming soon because of the OSB. Luckily this chimney is good. And I've got carbon monoxide detector up there with me just in case because I'm quite paranoid about things like that. So I have one of those sat up there with me, but so far this one has been great. There's been no smoke in the room. We will still liner it when we get round to doing the liners, which won't be long because up un until we get that done, we can't use the one in the front room, in the living room too, too often because it's all coming out in here. It comes out around that sort of area. Not really sure if it's fixable because it's behind the roof rafters. So um, I think the best thing. And the fact that they're old and they've not been used for a long time. So putting liners in them is probably going to be the best idea all round. And then with the idea of a possibility of log wood burners they need flues anyway so it will be beneficial to do at 29 and I find myself wondering what did happen to the last 10 I ran away with my life fast forward never turn back again it's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. Is this really happening? I can't be too sure. Here we are. 10 degrees in this bedroom that I'm just going to continue hoovering the ceiling. It got a little, started to get a bit dark and we don't like having the generator on too late because although we haven't got many neighbours, one, the one neighbour that we do have who's a farmer is also a bus driver and he comes home around five-ish and if we can help it we try not to have a generator on this Ben. Morning. He's been sweeping. <laughs> but I showed you the temperature over there. Mit, 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 round. Because Ben's just lit the fire. Sorry. No, it was only just a. Uh, you've lit the fire. So then we'll do a temperature check later on. I think it got up to about 17 in here uh, yeah, by the end of yeah, the day. And a half and a half was Which. Yeah. Hot, wasn't it? And all of the stones. Which, when you think that's in a room where the windows are a little 
questionable, all three of them, and there's all these holes in the roof. Yeah, no insulation. No insulation. And no ceiling. And no ceiling. No carpeting down. No insulation around the room yet. And lots of plaster work missing. That's actually not bad to... I'm hoping it will get up to 17 again. So that's a 7 degrees increase from just that fire. Here we go, we're up over, ooh, look at that, hit 13, so we've gone up 3 degrees, 77% humidity, which is still a bit high, but I hope that if we keep a fire going in there every day, we can get the humidity down. The humidity in the kitchen has dropped so much since we've had the range going pretty much continuously. And it's a shame we can't do the same for in the living room at the moment until we get flu liners. Um, we got the dehumidifier and a electric fan going. It's obviously a large room to try and heat with a tiny little small electric heater. And then the generator has to be going as well. So all the cobwebs are gone. Do, 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 do. Cobwebs be gone. So that's nice. Looks a whole lot better now. With all of those gone. Just looks cleaner. I've left the carbon monoxide detector up there, so I'm gonna have to get the trestles back under there. So that's that, and then shortly we'll get the windows cleaned. Um, they're quite, well, because the house has been empty for such a long time, they're, they're quite dirty. I suppose years and years of no one being here, really. So they're a bit filthy. So I will give those a clean because the difference from cleaning the other ones before is huge. It makes them look so much nicer. It's hard to tell. It doesn't really show up just how dirty they are. But I will give them a clean. I can't get the outside. I have to get a ladder. The cobwebs are on the outside. I said yesterday I was cleaning windows and I did clean windows but I forgot to press record so I didn't film any of it but I did clean the windows they still need cleaning on the outside but it rained yesterday so it one it seemed pointless when it was raining and two being up on a ladder in the cold and the rain cleaning windows isn't my idea of fun so I didn't get them done but I'll flick you around and show you the windows um, in a minute um, today is doing the wall around the room in the I'll get my arm in the right place around the edges so that's the job for today Ben has lit me a fire and that's what he's doing downstairs getting some coal and some logs to keep it nice and warm up here um, and I will get on and do this Good 
good thing about this stuff is even the thinnest of little gaps, you can still get it in there. door. I don't know if you can see it properly. I love all of the doors in this house actually. Look at that. This one's a key lock but on a couple of the others you've got the slider to lock it and they all still work and in time we'll um, take all the bits off like this and bring them back to life. Now I'm going to take that surround off of this window here and see how much insulation I can get in there. It, it's temporary but it's not temporary, it depends. It's going to be a while till we can afford to replace all of these windows and to be fair they're not that bad. There's a slight crack on that one but it is the only one and they will do us and if we can get them insulated and stop some of the drafts coming in they'll they'll be fine they'll need painting outside painting inside and maybe a little bit of wood hardener here and there but they'll do us for a bit because we have so much to do they're not on the huge priority top of the list guttering and Mm, water indoors, hot water indoors and a shower indoors comes slightly above thinking about replacing windows that really aren't that bad. Um, so there you go. That's what I'm just about to do and I will turn you round and you can watch <laughs> me try and get this off. In the kitchen, where you can see you got this one. Oh, it's focused on my finger, that's it. We've got this board to remove now. We're not sure what's underneath it, apart from I've put the torch in there and I can see a lot of woodworm dust and cobwebs. But what we're hoping that <coughs> there's somewhere where we can wedge a timber. A timber wedge. A timber wedge. Or spacer. <laughs> or a spacer. <laughs> a lump of wood. Yeah, because there is nothing holding this window in other than those pieces of um, timber framing, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. And, and there will have been, or, or there has been some mastic <clears throat> on the outside of the frame. Um, but the, the kitchen, the back kitchen window was the same, wasn't it? Mm. Um, I shut the window the one day and the whole window started to come in and when we looked at it basically they'd put timber wedges in there's no screws timber wedges in to hold it in place they masticed around the outside and That's that it. Yeah. that was it it was the mastic holding it in place and obviously the framework which i 
took away. So, but yeah, which is what we want to do. We don't want bits of plasterboard and no, we want want them exposed. Yeah, but yeah, it looks like they relied on something else to hold the windows in place. I don't know. At the end of the day, did they have hammer drills? 80 years ago, 100 years <laughs> yeah. ago, to try and drive into the into the stone, I doubt it. And what timbers they built into the walls, they've rotted now. It'll be fine. Yeah. Just don't shut the window because it blows. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll get the hoover, I'll get rid of all of that up there then, and then we'll sort something. Yeah. <clears throat> Dawn's now going to use the sheep's wool gap filling insulation. Uh, I will when I can find it. Um, for the top edge the and then for the sides, because the sides are four or five inches away. Let me try and zoom you back in. I'm not very good at this. Here we go. Uh, what's that? That's four, four and a half inches between the actual window frame and the, the stonework now because all of our do you want me to move out the way no it's fine because all of our insulation for the loft came we do have this is one we've cut to size because we used it in the in the kitchen window this morning um, I think we got four of these out of one width and that will you want to plop that in there as a demo? Yep. I can either go that way. So that goes down there quite simply and stops the draft yep. until we get the uh, oh, silicon we could do it. or mastic. Will it go that way? Or no, is it it's too thin. Too thin, so we go any other way. Yeah, we go that way. So that's what we're going with for the sides of the window. Yeah, it's not a permanent fixture. Or well, certainly not like that, is it? No, no. <laughs> da da, we finished. Finished. That's it, it. May be, it may it's be permanent until after Christmas or the well, spring. Yeah, but yeah, we don't plan on just... We're not just leaving that that is the not, decor. We're not just going to wedge our windows in, plaster over the top and go, it's done. No. No, to be like the past, we do have to put mastic around the outside. Then we cover it over and go, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's that's what will happen at the yeah. sides. It fits nicely. And that will just cover that little bit of a gap up before we get some, some mastic in. It's too damp outside, the concrete. Right all the way up in there? Yeah, fill it in. But I'm, I'm the one waffling now. Dawn waffles, I waffle. It's very hard to stop waffling, really. It when is. when do you when do you know when to stop waffling? When do you know when you've gone too far with the waffling? Well, this is it. You've gone too far, so you haven't realised. No. no, this is it. So I'm sure we, well I'm not sure actually, because of the order of the videos, but this is a, unlike the, the gap filler, this is I think 75% sheep's wool, I'm just looking at the label, I think it's 75% sheep's wool and 25% um, is it nylon, Dawn? I couldn't remember earlier, I, I think. Um, shall I have a quick look? Yeah, no. Because I started saying about it and I thought, I actually can't remember. Yeah. I think it was... And we bought it. I don't know, polyester. 
polyester. We we bought this one not because of what I'm about to tell you, but because it was nearly half the price of 100% sheep's wool. Um, and bearing in mind we've got 13, uh, 39 of these rolls um, for the loft space. It's very expensive. So we went with that because of the price. The reviews were fantastic. Um, but then Dawn read that there was um, tests done and by using, and it could be a sales gimmick, by using 75% or whatever the percentage is and other materials you get a better insulation value than sheep's wool 100% sheep's wool it says 75% wool plus recycled fibers to increase durability performance and sustainability firma fleece research shows 75% wool mixed with recycled fibers provides better performance and other insulation with a higher percentage of wool Right, the camera's going to run out of battery, so, so we're going to we'll bid you farewell. Yeah, we will stop there. Um, that looks nicer. I'm going to do that one again as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It looks nicer, doesn't it? I don't know if it's going to be. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the living room window, pretty much taken out and yeah. put back in again. We have exactly the same to do over there. Yeah, we got one over there to do, hiding behind the blinds. But at least we know it's in properly and insulated for the first time ever. So if you haven't guessed, it is time to do some insulation. Um, we are in the pink, or I am in the pink peach, I think Dawn calls it. Was the pink room and the end room, pink and peach. Um, Dawn hoovered it, as you all saw. All, all the collar ties and the rafters have been hoovered, all the nails are gone. Um, so it's time to put some insulation up and some board. Not sure how the board's gonna go up yet. Now, the insulation is uh, sheep's wool again, but it's 75% sheep's wool. I think we said before when we were insulating the windows, 75% sheep's wool, 25%, uh, um, I think polyester Dawn said yesterday, because it's cheaper than 100% sheep wool that is expensive um, but the manufacturer recommends that there's a gap between the tiles or the slates whatever it is you have on your roof of at least um, an inch and a half two inches now because it's quite thick if i put it between the rafters it's pretty much going to be touching the the slates and the tiles um, so what i thought i would do with face fix and staple onto the face of the rafters and then put the ply on top of that. Not sure how it's gonna look. As with everything, at the moment, it is a temporary ceiling, so it, it's not a huge big deal, but we don't want it to look really, really rubbish. Um, for above the collar ties, I'm gonna be cutting it to width and laying it between um, the collar ties. So along, where's my finger there? So the ply will go up first and then I'll be able to lay the insulation on top of the plywood. Um, that won't be today. Um, you can cut the wool insulation 
um, with a pair of scissors but it does give you a blister on the back of your finger and your scissors need to be really sharp and it takes a long, long time. Um, so what uh, Dawn found was an insulation cutting saw um, with a sharpener and hopefully that will make it much, much easier for when I do between uh, the collar ties. Uh, Dawn's downstairs insulating the second window in the living room um, to try and keep that nice and toasty. We have lit a fire, or I've lit a fire, even though it gets a little bit smoky initially in this bedroom. I lit the fire a good while ago, opened the windows upstairs, so all, all the smoke's gone now. Um, and as you saw, I've got the fire in the bedroom going too, um, just to warm it up a little bit. Uh, you can feel that where the fires have been on, it is starting to dry the walls out. It does make a difference, but. You can't see my breath. I can see it is chilly up here. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I've got the battery staple gun, so that's really good. That makes life a lot, lot easier instead of the manual ones. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So I've had a practice off camera because it's much easier to do the first thing unless you've already done it before, um, much easier to do it off the camera. Um, the staples that were in the staple gun originally were 10 millimeters, and I did think they would be long enough to staple to the rafters, but they weren't. Luckily I have some 14 mil spare, not many, but I have some, um, and I've got more on order and they do work. Um, we're not sure what the plywood's going to look like. My thought was we also staple the ply to the rafters, but with 14 mil staples, the ply is five and a half mil. That gives us nine and a half mil of staple left, and we know 10 mil doesn't go through the insulation. So that's, you know, it's a, a live and learn process so I'll do exactly that live and have a go and learn along the way
also, yeah. Well, I don't know if we mentioned them on this video. We've certainly mentioned the leaks. Yeah. Um, and the holes. And the holes. And the daylight. And the daylight and the drips of floor, drips of floor, drips of water on the floor. <laughs> so, Sean, our saviour builder, even though I messaged him, I don't know what day it was, and said, we've got an emergency, we've got water coming in the ridge tiles. Yeah. The, I think the Monday or Tuesday. When we say our builder, he's not Yeah, he's not, our, he's not our builder. <laughs> no, he's, he's just... He is a builder. He's a builder, and somebody said, oh, give this guy a ring. Yeah. Um, we are actually bodging all of this yeah. quite well on our own without... Yeah, builder. no, he's, he's not our builder. He's, no, he's, he's a, a builder. builder. Um, now... Same guy that uncapped the chimneys and we said about the ridge tiles and he was like, oh, well, you need a cherry picker and an X, Y, Z. And, and it really didn't sound like he wanted to do it, which was why we got the scaffolding. We were going to do yeah. it. But I sent him a message anyway and said, look, we got some scaffolding. And he did reply in the end and said, I'll be with you Thursday, I think it was. Yeah. And he came and what he thought, he was going to do wasn't what we thought he was going to do so we've ended up with new ridge tiles um some new, new slates, slates that yeah. he, he did warn us when we're taking the old ridge tiles off it's going to open a can of worms it's going to break slates and tiles and things um and he was right and he's replaced those um and that's he's it done an amazing job it is an amazing job he's and that an that night job. it poured with rain didn't it yeah really poured with rain and there wasn't a drop on the floor and the floors dried out so we're, we're ever so pleased and he's gone on his way um i think till after christmas and it, it's really a don't call me i'll call you type yeah. of thing Love yeah he's, he is really busy and he's really good because he fits us in he, he does he fits us in when we're he panicking. finds a day when we're in need he came and he did the tiles for us he's uncapped the chimneys even though i think uncapping the chimneys we waited three months yeah long, really long, a long long time so, so busy but, but I, I send him a message and i send him a couple of love hearts which i think he finds really really weird <laughs> um and when when he's finished i'll say let me do that i'll, I'll say we appreciate you coming around and doing this so much and he just goes well and he just laughs i yeah. think because he's a builder it's his job but to us, you know, no, no rain coming in the ceiling. Yeah, to us coming over here with zero experience no, yeah, of no doing experience. anything like this. And this is a huge, a huge task to take on. Yeah, we would have done it. Yeah, if, we if, would, we'd had, if we'd had more time yeah, in this room. It might have... Um, ha, if it was our bedroom, we would have gone, OK, we're, we're sleeping in the kitchen, we're happy in the kitchen. Yeah we'll do it ourselves but because it is going to be our son's bedroom it does need insulating it was a bit of an emergency um but yeah so they're done um we got drone footage of them before we can do drone footage of them mm. after um but you can't see daylight no there's no water and it's just the, the, just the sound of the wind itself mm. as, as minimised. I know we do have some insulation up, so that will deaden the sound, but just not having the holes makes a world of difference. But that's my waffling. <laughs> um, we've now got to move all of that to under the trestles or somewhere out of the way. And this is where we said about living in the house you're renovating, being hard yeah in it's not impossible it's not impossible <laughs> it's not hard it's it annoying just everything awkward. You, you, you just got to keep moving everything and yeah. then you move it again and whatever in our defense we have saved we worked it out and i think it's about six thousand euros by not putting our stuff into storage mm. and we that's that's why we did it yeah we couldn't afford to. no you, you can't afford to just put your stuff away it we're, we're six months down the line. Imagine if our stuff was still in storage. It yeah. would just be astronomical. Every, every box bar two or three has been opened because we've needed something out of it. If it's in storage, what do you do? You get in the car, you drive to your storage unit. It was going to be 
I don't know how many hours round trip because it was in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um, I think it was going to be about five hours round trip. Mm. Uh, so that's why our stuff's here. I, I'm sure some people will say, well, why have you bought all your stuff? That's, that's why. It's just annoying. It's not hard. It's annoying that we move stuff from A to B and B to A and D to G and, and it, yeah, it's just okay. ongoing. But again, it's our choice. It's not a moan. It's just if you are going to renovate a place and you're going to live in it, do a caravan, <laughs> um, do an Airbnb. But it, we didn't. We we didn't want to. Well, we did. We didn't have the money to do a caravan. No, we we would have much uh, much rather. I don't know if we would have much rather spent the two three thousand on not buying a caravan but mm. being able to do everything we've done so far yeah or live in a caravan yeah this is it isn't it so but there you go i could stand here and watch dawn <laughs> move stuff but i won't i'm going to pause this we'll be back in a bit Dawn's um, hoovering of the joist and cleaning all of the joist and rafters has made such a difference to just be able to come up here and not have your cobwebs in your hair and so yeah, it's not pleasant is although it? Although it may have seemed a fruitless exercise it really wasn't because it's made a massive difference to to coming up here mm. and for putting the the ply up we didn't worry about bits dropping did we and no, and Nast, it's just nasty, dirty spider webs. It's just more pleasant, isn't it, to clean something before you then, especially put something new in. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Top tip, don't cut through the rafter you're kneeling on. <laughs> I was just thinking. Or joist, collar tie, whatever it yeah. is. Don't cut through that. No. You need that. And because it's sheep's wool, it's a little bit dusty, but well, no, it's not dusty, is it? It's a little bit um, fibery. fibery. You get the old yeah. fibre, um, but being a natural product, it doesn't make you itch. No. It is, it's, it's just like a rug. Yeah, you don't need to be all gloved and up masked, and that, yeah. suited up, no, like you it. would with, I don't know. Do you get fiberglass insulation anymore? Does it still exist as it was when we were kids, where it just... I don't think so. No, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if it was ever fiberglass. 
I know we always called it fiberglass. Yeah, I don't know, but it was always very itchy. Yeah, it was. When you got up in the loft. Extremely itchy. You get the Christmas decorations down. Well, no, we just used to go just, in the loft. Yeah. We used to like being in the loft. <laughs> Strange <laughs> children. <laughs> I think it was the challenge of getting up I into the loft. I think that's what it was, yeah. Because we used to do, we used to drag our chest of drawers onto the landing. Then we put a chair on top of the chest of drawers to get in the loft. And then getting in the loft is fine. It's the getting back out. Because yeah. when you sit in that loft hatch, when you're mm, 10, Sorry. maybe a bit older, and you sit there with your legs dangling and that chair looks like it's a million miles away. Yeah, and you've got to try and get down. Well, mine was learned <clears throat> behaviour because Dad used to... I'm not sure what he used to do. He used to put his hand on the door and I think the storage heater... Yeah. And sort of stand... Ho hoik yourself stand up. Stand on the doorknob yeah. of the bedroom door and then pull himself mm. up so that's how i used to do it when i was big enough to do it yeah until i was big enough to do it there wasn't a way up because there was no ladder no no ours didn't have a ladder that's how dad used to get in the loft it was a chest of drawers and that was I for that sells. yeah i don't know dad used to get in there actually no there you go the joys of childhood yeah and childhood now memories now we've got our own loft <laughs> and our own insulation <laughs> we will actually put loft hatches in these won't we once yeah. we do them properly it seems quite a lot of fruitless things that we're doing at the moment but it's because we're not 100 percent sure of what we yeah, final want outcome. the final outcome to be and we don't want to waste money really that doing, yeah, doing things doing that we something. think that we think oh that really isn't the best thing to have done the insulation is worth Permanent. laying out for because that will always stand no matter what we do to the surface of yeah the ceilings of the bedrooms well, we might put we were saying yesterday weren't we we might put just a few boards in here once we got a loft hatch Mm. We're limited by the width of the collar ties because we won't yeah. we won't move the collar ties. No. Um, <clears throat> limiting the width of what you can actually get up then reduces any weight in the loft because you can only get small bits up yeah. here. Yeah. Um, they obviously weren't designed to be a loft space. A loft space, so the the strength isn't there. But just to be loaded them up. But just to have little bits which you have nowhere to put. Mm. Like then, your Christmas decorations. Like your Christmas decorations. That's about the only thing that we're missing a place for, isn't it? It is really, really the Christmas the, decorations. The other stuff's shed stuff, isn't mm. it? It's in the bedroom. Well, it was loft stuff. Yeah, we got some bits of loft but stuff that we don't have a loft for. That we won't have a home for at the moment. But even our house we were living at before we moved mm. they were only 400 width um, joists so we were very limited with what we could get into the loft yeah and the roof structure because it was a new build yeah so much timber work oh, up there everywhere wasn't yeah. there? It, loads it wasn't loads. particularly a usable and I don't think they're designed to be usable no, usable space for yeah. weight and things. I think the, the loft hatch is more for access, but. I was going to say, I can hear the generator running. But I don't need to apologise for the sound because it's become apparent that you can't you actually can't hear, hear it. it. We can hear it, but it doesn't get picked up. Well, I'm saying that we haven't got mics on at the moment. No, so it doesn't not. get picked up on the mic. So if you can actually hear it because there's no <sighs> mic transmitter plugged into the phone, we're sorry. We apologise for the generator. If you can't hear it, ignore us. Yeah. 
Right, that's that one. You can make your own generator noise if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you can't make a noise as loud as our generator. <laughs> it's not very well, our generator. No. So there we have it. What we thought, or we were thinking, oh, that's going to look a little bit weird with the strips on. Um, actually looks like the fashionable paneling you put on your walls, which I use MDF. I'm not saying it's as good as <laughs> no. the panels you put on your wall. But it, it looks less 70s caravan. Yeah, than, than we I thought than we thought it, it would. Look. Yeah. We did um, we did worry a little bit. Dawn said about the padded sal effect. It, Dawn, yeah, it Dawn, does Dawn called it a Garibaldi and yeah. a disco, I think it looks like a padded sal. So that's that's that. All that remains, I've got to put the pendants back on for the lights. That would be interesting. You might see me in another video, you might not. Don't say that. <laughs> um, as always, big tidy up. It's not a huge tidy up operation. Dawn tidied up earlier. Yes, uh, just tools. <coughs> yeah, tools, trestles, sawdust, yeah. um, bits of ply, um, removal of cats. Look oh, at him. hello Steve. Are you coming in? Our bedroom is through there. Come on. And unfortunately it will be a dumping ground. At the end of the day we've got a bedroom. Come on, let's Our go bedroom's on. currently in the kitchen. So <laughs> look at that's you. possibly gonna be the, the last thing to be insulated. I know, you haven't There's been so in much here. stuff in there. I'm and sorry. actually if we did it while the Christmas decorations were up. We have left stuff in our bedroom to move every time we want to get somewhere. We do. Mm. Still empty boxes, but they're easier than full boxes. I wasn't really listening anyway. Oh, okay, you're talking to the cat. cats. Yeah, so what, what was you saying about boxes of Christmas to do with our bedroom? I was just saying if we do it when the Christmas decorations what, are up. Do our bedroom? Yeah, it's less boxes to move. Yeah. So that's, that's us little job the next job will be I really need a shave Simon I'm sorry <laughs> um, and a haircut um, our next job will yeah be it's funny actually I was thinking you need a haircut turning this into a bedroom yes a proper bedroom with mm. a bed curtains duvet covers and it will look like a bedroom ish thank you very yeah. very much for watching you got anything yeah. to say no I don't think so no no I've rambled enough yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speak to you all soon. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.